Welcome back. In this video I will show you how to obtain TX and uh, will guide you with the first steps um, in the, with the software. So TX is freely available from uh, our GitLab repository. To access it you can go through the TFD website. So first result in Google epc.ed.tum.de and then Okay, if we switch to English, yeah, research, we have the, the, the link TX software and here is the, the link to the GitLab repository. Uh, or you can go directly to gitlab.lrz.de slash tfd slash tx. So here is the, the project with all the, all the files and folders. Uh, readme file to guide you uh, a little bit and there are two ways to install TX. The first solution is to clone the repository using git. This is the um, solution I would recommend as it is best practice for version control. It will also allow you to have the latest releases and always be up to date uh, by simply pulling the latest development. To do so, you need to use the software Git. On this computer, I'm using Linux, so I will simply open a terminal and use the command sudo apt install git all. It asks for my password and here it doesn't do anything because the software is already installed, um, but it simply installs the software if you haven't done uh, already. On macOS and uh, Windows, it's slightly different. If we use again a Google search, we can take the first link, git scm.com. And here you have uh, various resources like documentation, but also the download button. And you have a guide for Mac, Mac OS, how to install it. And similarly, you also have a guide for Windows uh, where you can download a, a, a client. Once uh, Git is installed, you can clone the repository using this, for example, clone with HTTPS command. So we copy the URL and in my terminal, I will simply git, git clone recursive. Then I paste the link to the repository and then I select the local folder where I want it to be cloned. So for example, for me, that would be in documents, TAX, tutorials, MATLAB, and let's call that folder TAX. And enter, and now it's cloning the repository into my local folder. It may take a few seconds depending on your internet connection. And it's done. We can open a file explorer and go to my folder TX tutorial MATLAB and here is my TX that is cloned. So here I can see I find all the files and uh, the toolbox SSS is also correctly cloned. I can check that if I open a terminal, I can do git status and it tells me that indeed I am on the master branch and I am up to date with the master branch. So that's the first way of obtaining TX. The second solution is to download as a standalone the software. 
you will have all the same functionalities. However, there will be no update possible, which means that when a new development is done and you want to use the latest version, you have to re-download it and you, can, you can't just cherry pick how the files changed. So the download button is here. You can just download a zip file, for example, and we will put it in the same location, TX tutorial MATLAB. Let's keep it like that, TX master. Save. If I op reopen my file explorer, now I have my file here. I can unzip it and I have my TX master. We can open it. We see that we also have all the files. However, we can check if we do git status. It doesn't um, work because it's not a git repository, which means there is no way of updating using git. And one thing to notice is that the here the SSS folder is completely empty. So we have to uh, also download the files for that folder. When you clone with git, it's with the recursive function is already um, cloned from the other repository. But if you download it manually, you also have to download the SSS toolbox. SSS toolbox is, um, is a software developed both by the Regelungstechnik and TFD group uh, at TUM um, to build uh, spare state space models. So here you have to um, download it to the correct with the correct commit. So if you just click on the commit number, it will open a GitHub repository. And um, here you can download the, the zip file. Again, put that in SSS, save it. And if we unzip it, we have all the files here. Actually, I think we have to put it, put them at the, at the root of SSS, paste, and we can delete that and we're good to go. So this is another way of installing TX. However, I would recommend not using it and rather clone with Git. Um, if you're afraid that updates with Git would break your um, working models, you are not forced to update. You can use your current version without changing anything. It's just it just gives you the opportunity if you want to uh, to update. Okay, now let's have a quick look uh, at at TX. So to do so, I will start a MATLAB um, session. So here is my MATLAB session. I will go to my document, TX tutorial, MATLAB, TX, and there we have it. Uh, since we are with the Git version, we see the um, green dots. That means that the files are up to date with the with the latest commit, um, and nothing has changed with the master branch. So to start with TX, the first thing to do is to open the TX um, init script and to run it. It's just a script to initialize all the path uh, that will be necessary. You can actually uh, also have a um, startup MATLAB file that will run that init file automatically when you launch uh, MATLAB. Now that the init is done, we can have a look at the structure. We have the library and a 
library saved in MATLAB R 2015A for compatibility. License and readme file. Some tutorials on how to use TX. Some test cases for validation. The SSS toolbox that is necessary uh, to run the, the software. A, f a folder elements where we have all the elements present in the in the library and then functions internal to tx with all the all the necessary functions to run and solve and post process the results let's have a look at the library um, it contains the elements that you will use to build your network models. So you have different types of elements. Uh, you have a boundary type elements like open end, closed end, choked end, loudspeaker, reflective end. Um, then you have a compact element that serve different purposes, like an area change where the cross section is uh, changing abruptly and it will impact the mean values have a subsonic nozzle, T-junctions that allow you to split or merge the flow. Then you have non-compact elements like a duct where acoustic wave propagate. Then you have also a duct that can uh, also take into account uh, temperature gradients and uh, varying cross section. Then you have elements uh, for flame modeling, like simple NTAR model or the G equation or a more general transfer function model. Uh, there will be a video dedicated uh, for these uh, for these elements. Uh, then you have a flame element or a simple temperature jump. You can also impose a scattering acoustic scattering matrix. You have a Bloch element to reduce computational costs if you have a discrete rotational symmetry and you have elements to ex extract some quantities of interest like scattering matrices. So in the next videos you will see how those elements um, can be used um, and we will go into more details. Um, we can already have a sneak peek, uh, for example when you double click um, that opens a mask and you can change the parameters of the element so here for a boundary condition, for example, you can select if it's an upstream or downstream boundary, then you have several parameters like the area, the Mach number, density, speed of sun, and so on. Obviously, depending on the elements you're considering, the parameters will be different. Um, for example, for the area change, you have in this case uh, the area ratio, but also a pressure loss coefficient, and you can introduce some uh, inertial lengths. Um, so each element has a set of um, uh, of parameters that you can specify, and yeah, in the next videos we will see into in more details how to set up uh, models and how to use these elements.